This is question 5 of the P1.5 end of topic test. On screen now is Mark's scheme for the question, so please mark your work. If you get the question correct, I suggest you move on to the next question. If you get parts of the question incorrect, please listen to the rest of the recording to find out how to answer the question correctly in the future. You may wish to pause the recording now so you can mark your work. In the first part of question 5, it says the steady state theory was once a popular alternative to the Big Bang theory. The steady state theory suggests that the universe, although expanding, had no origin and it has always existed. As the universe expands, a small amount of matter is created to keep the universe looking exactly the same all the time. When considering the origin of the universe, what is the difference between the Big Bang theory and the steady state theory? Well, part of the answer is in the question because the steady state theory. theory says the universe had no origin. Full stop. That's one mark. The idea that state state has no origin. Even if you didn't really know what the Big Bang Theory was, which you should do because you should revise for a test, you could probably guess that the main difference is that the Big Bang Theory suggests that the universe had an origin. And that is the second mark. So the Big Bang Theory states the universe has an origin. Okay, you don't need to know anything else, you don't need to go into anything else, it's just the idea that the universe has an origin and that gives you the second mark, and that's also two. And there's not much leeway, I'm afraid, of the mark scheme. You need to basically say, steady state theory says, the universe had an origin, has no origin, sorry, and the Big Bang Theory states that the universe has an origin. Okay, the next part of the question says, the light from a distant galaxy shows a red shift. I ask you to explain what is red shift. Uh, now, red shift is when um, the, the light appears to have shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Okay, that's the visible light spectrum. So the light appears to have shifted towards the red end of the visible light spectrum. The reason for this is that the wavelength of the light has increased. So this is because the wavelength, which remember has symbol lambda, put that in brackets. So wavelength of the light has increased. That's a full definition there. Now the bit that you actually need is the wavelengths increased and that gives you one mark. However, if you had a put that the light appears to have moved towards the red end of the spectrum, that would also get you one mark. So that bit there will get you another mark as well, or the, the mark as well. So you have one mark for either one. The correct answer, what the mark scheme is looking for, is this is because the wavelength of light has increased. However, you'd also get a mark saying that the light appears to have shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. The next question says, why does redshift provide evidence to support both the Big Bang Theory and the steady state theory? So we're going to talk about redshift first. So what does redshift prove? So redshift proves that the universe or the universe... is expanding. That's the key word. That's what redshift does. It proves it's expanding. So redshift proves the universe is expanding. Okay, so it's the whole universe is expanding. That's one mark. That's the first mark. The second mark is for linking to the Big Bang Theory and the Steady State Theory. And that is basically saying that both of those theories suggest the universe is expanding. So both, you know, both theories... Uh, suggest 
about the universe. He's expanding. So, red shift supports both theories. Now, the second mark, because you had two marks, is for saying that it's the red shift supports both theories, and each is the second mark. So just to summarise again for this part of the question, the idea is that redshift proves the universe is expanding, that's the first mark, and the second mark is for basically saying that this supports both theories. And you can have words to that effect as well to those marks. The next part of the question says the steady state theory is important in encouraging new research into the universe. Suggest the reason why scientists were keen to carry out new research. Now, the reason scientists were were keen to carry out your research is that scientists were basically being paid to support either one of the theories. So they wanted to find evidence to prove that their theory is correct. So the reason why they encouraged new research is um, it was basically encouraged to, to prove one of the theories. Correct. You could alternatively have uh, the reverse argument, so that get you one mark. The reverse argument, or to disprove one of the theories. And that will also get you a mark. In the final part of this question, it says that scientists can answer many questions about the universe, but not the question, why was the universe created? Suggest the reason why this question cannot be answered by scientists. Now the reason I think that this can't be answered by scientists and the first thing that comes into my head is that there's no evidence about how the universe was created. And that will get you the mark basically saying there's no evidence or no data um, however when the exam board set this what they were looking for is that the creation of the universe is a belief there's no scientific evidence to suggest why the universe was created um, and that's down to people's individual belief and they put that down to religious reasons uh, so basically the question could be answered religiously would also get you the mark or the question comes down to people's beliefs they get you the mark However, I think the scientific way of answering this is to say that there's no evidence to suggest why the universe was created. And that brings us to the end of this question.